Special counsel Jack Smith was on fire this week, issuing subpoenas to former Vice President Mike Pence and former Donald Trump's National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. We also learned that Trump's attorney, his current attorney, Evan Corcoran, testified before the criminal grand jury in Washington, D.C., where special counsel Jack Smith is presenting evidence. Remind me what MAGA stands for again. Make attorneys get attorneys. And how about Trump's laptop from hell? We learned this week that back in January, Donald Trump's other lawyer, Jim Trusty, also known as Jim Don't Trust Me, turned over an additional folder with classification markings over to the Department of Justice that was found in Mar-a-Lago. And there was also a laptop belonging to a current Trump aide with classified materials related to that folder that was also uncovered apparently by Trump's lawyer that was turned over to the FBI and the Department of Justice. Look, everything, and I mean everything, the MAGA Republicans accuse Democrats of, which Democrats by and large don't do, is exactly the conduct that MAGA Republicans do all of the time. It's all projection. As Yoda would say, the projection is strong, Obi-Wan. And the projection was on full display in these ridiculous MAGA-led House of Representatives hearings. This is what they wanted to do with, with the control of the House of Representatives. The MAGA Republicans held an oversight committee hearing. It shouldn't even be called that, but that's what the committee's called, uh, with former Twitter executives. And what the MAGA Republicans wanted to do is yell at them for blocking MAGA Republicans because the MAGA Republicans spread COVID disinformation and promoted Putin conspiracy theories and hate. And then the MAGA Republicans also held a hearing in the so-called subcommittee on the Department of Justice and FBI weaponization. That's what the MAGA Republicans called it. But the MAGA Republicans got destroyed at these hearings. And then the Democrats exposed that the MAGA Republicans and Trump engaged in everything that they were accusing President Biden and Democrats of. And I love this. I love that Democrats are just punching back with the truth haven't really seen the Democrats this aggressive before. And I like what I am seeing. And you know what it is, Popak? Here's my theory. I think Republicans have enjoyed smelling their own fascist farts on Fox so much that they forgot that they smell like traitorous filth and that they are also not the sharpest tools in the shed. And Democrats have some really smart people. And in this format where it's not quick cuts and it's not sound bites, you could really expose these MAGA Republicans in that format. Like the Democrats basically hijacked these committees to prove what a traitor Donald Trump was. Also, the Midas Touch Network's very own Michael Cohen met with the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg this week as things heat up there in Alvin Bragg's criminal investigation of Donald Trump. And Cohen broke it with an exclusive here on the Midas Touch that he would be sitting with Alvin Bragg. And then Cohen also gave us the exclusive. He's going to be going back very soon for a 16th meeting. That bodes well that an indictment is coming soon. That's why you have these increased frequency of uh, of meetings. Finally, Dominion's $1.6 billion lawsuit against Fox is set to go to trial in April. And at a status conference this week, Dominion called out Fox for failing to produce evidence, or should we say perhaps spoliating or destroying evidence. And Dominion wants to keep that April trial date. Okay, so indictment watch, Jack Smith, Alvin Bragg, Phony Willis, who will indict first. On trial watch, we've got Dominion versus Fox in April, 
E. Jean Carroll versus Trump in April, the Proud Boys seditious conspiracy trial taking place right now. And I guess because I'm given a lot of references to smells in uh, that opening, it smells like justice is, uh, is, is here. I like that. I like that scent, at least. Popak, how are you, sir? Doing great. Let me add on to your trial calendar. October 2nd, Manhattan Supreme Court, civil fraud trial, $250 million against Trump and 16 other defendants. We got a lot to talk about. Somewhere between the April trials that we talked about, Fox News and E. Jean Carroll, the October trial against Trump and everybody else, we're going to have indictments. Now, I know people are getting frustrated by when. We don't want to watch until you actually have the indictments, but that's not what this show is all about. This show is about real-time analysis and updates about events that are important for people to know at the intersection of law and politics. And we got a great show today. And Popak, you're changing up the glasses now every show. Are you going to do a yeah. different glass? Every other show. <laughs> I, I, I like it. The Midas Mighty likes it. The legal AFers like it. Now, my intro was a little bit long. People want to hear from Popak. Popak, tell us why this was such a monumental week in special counsel Jack Smith's uh, criminal investigation with the subpoenas that were out to Pence, to O'Brien, Evan Corcoran. We'd love to hear your take here. Yeah, you have a former vice president of the United States that's been subpoenaed criminally to appear before a grand jury. Let's just let's just we've we, we kind of have gotten a little fatigued not here at Legal AF in our audience, but in general with with things and we forget how momentous, how historic they are. And that this vice president and and it's not the result of a surprise. I don't want people reading headlines. This is why they come here, I think, to take away from it like Pence woken up in the middle of the night, handed a subpoena for the grand jury. It is the result of months of negotiations that have been reported between Pence's people, his lawyers, and the Department of Justice about getting him in. We can't tell yet whether he's being dragged in or, as some suspect, um, Pence wants the subpoena to give him cover to be able to tell grand jury what he believes. Now, look, Pence may not have... Um, been willing and didn't testify before the Jan 6 committee. Um, but he has uh, not been quiet or silent about the pressure that was put on him during um, January 6 to certify the election and his view based on his own analysis. But really, you know, he brought in Michael Ludig, the, um, the, the right wing uh, neocon Republican a judge, a former judge, who gave him the analysis that he his role was merely ceremonial on Jan 6, and that the founding fathers would never have put into the hands of one person in a delicately balanced checks and balance system the power to overthrow the country or to not recognize the will of the people. And so he wrote about that. Uh, uh, Pence wrote about that in that memoir that I didn't read, this 500-page um, uh, opus that he wrote, uh, a few months ago. Um, and, you know, he's so he's been public. So he's not he shouldn't be surprised. I don't believe this is about Mar-a-Lago. I think it's clear that Pence is being brought in, whether dragged in or not, to testify about the pressure that was put on him, the hang Mike Pence pressure, but including by the president, then president of the United States, Donald Trump directly because he even writes in his memoir, Pence does, and says, uh, I know I disappointed a dear friend in Donald Trump. When I what, disappoint, that's, that's what uh, stopping an insurrection has become, disappointment. But you know, one of the facts that came out of Jan 6, even though it didn't come out of the mouths of Mike Pence, but from others around him, if you remember, Ben, we talked about this at the time, he refused to get in the car of a Secret Service agent to be whisked away from the Capitol, which of course would have delayed the peaceful transfer of power. And he refused to do that. And we gave him a little bit of credit thinking at the time he knew there was a coup afoot and that he refused to participate in it. Now he's gonna have to stand and deliver in front of a grand jury sworn under oath to tell the truth and uh, under the the, the uh, careful but um, a sharp 
uh, cross-examination, if you will, of prosecutors working under Jack Smith. So that Pence kind of took all the headlines, but the other people that you mentioned are equally as important for the different grand juries that are going on simultaneously. Robert O'Brien is interesting because Robert O'Brien um, had been um, National Security Council advisor number four. He was the fourth and last one. He's been very public about Mike Pence doing the honorable thing. He's public that he he almost resigned on Jan 6 because of what he observed happened at the Capitol, but did not. He also he's also one of the only officials in the Trump administration who who did two things: announced out loud when it wasn't popular to do this that Joe Biden had won the presidency. So he acknowledged from within the Trump inner sanctum that Biden had won when Trump was refusing to acknowledge that, and said he would participate in the peaceful transfer. Uh, on the National Security Council side to all the uh, counterparts with the Biden administration, and, and which, of course, got him on the wrong side of Donald Trump because they didn't want to transition to anyone or anything. So O'Brien is interesting because he tries to act like he's a patriot. And I think that's going to play against him. And that's what Jack Smith's people are hoping for, is that he drops the executive privilege assertion. And that's going to be another fight they're going to have to have because he has put up the executive privilege before. His testimony is going to be about the, I think, and I think it's obvious, about the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago and at other places and what happened to them from White House to Mar-a-Lago. Because if the National Security Council senior advisor doesn't know, that, that shows there's another big problem. If he was cut out of the loop in that transfer, we're going to talk in the next segment about this this new discovery in January of a laptop belonging to a an aide of Donald Trump that now works at Save America PAC that downloaded all this classified information. For what purpose? To disseminate it, to transmit it to third parties? We'll get to that in a minute. But if if either Robert O'Brien knows about this or he doesn't know about it, and that fact alone is damning to Donald Trump that it, he cut out his own National Security Council advisor. The other people that Jack Smith is talking to or his people are talking to not yet subpoenaing, but it's coming, are people like Chad Wolf, who was the acting Homeland Security uh, Secretary, acting because they couldn't get all any of these people properly confirmed in time. Um, and he he's going to have to know, I would imagine, about the, um, about the documents at Mar-a-Lago and the like. Um, his deputy, uh, Mr. Cuccinelli, Ken Cuccinelli, already testified. And then you've got the, the cherry on the top, You've got another lawyer, as you said, making a lawyer, making lawyers get, you know, making attorneys get attorneys. Evan Corcoran, who has been a stalwart um, spear, you know, tip of the spear for Donald Trump in court proceedings. But, you know, this is what happened when you lay down with a dog, you, you, you wake up with fleas. He and Christina Bob, now who has her own criminal defense lawyer, certified that the whole process from the original demand by the National Archive that was rebuffed at, until there was a turnover of 15 boxes and 200 pages of classified documents. People forget that. That was the first wave. The Mar-a-Lago was the second wave. But who was, who was involved? Evan Corcoran. Who helped negotiate? Evan Corcoran. Who helped certify that this small batch of documents in a file folder about this big represented all of the documents that were classified? Through, through Christina Bob, Evan Corcoran, and then the, Mar the execution of the Mar-a-Lago search warrant. So Evan Corcoran has a lot of talking to do now. I'm sure he'll try to put up some sort of attorney-client privilege. I'm sure uh, Judge Chief Judge Beryl Howell in, in D.C. is going to have to pick through all these privilege issues to get them to testify. But if you're Donald Trump, I don't even know how the guy sleeps at night. But like you now your lawyer, one of your head lawyers is is testifying against you at the grand jury. So um, th those are the major developments in terms of um, who's in, who's going in. Now, some of these happened earlier, but we're just learning about them now. So we're bringing it to the legal AF audience. And here was Trump's response uh, last night after all of that was announced, after it was announced that Corcoran had uh, testified before the grand jury after the Penn subpoena, after the O'Brien subpoena. Trump writes, will Trump hating prosecutor Jack Smith be investigating the fact that they spied on my campaign? 
even as I was in the Oval Office, they stuffed the ballot boxes per 2,000 mules, right? That's like literally just citing Vladimir Putin at this point. Per 2,000 mules used COVID to cheat, that the FBI pushed Twitter and Facebook around, caused massive voter disruption and so much more. That's really what he should be looking at, not asking a very decent Mike Pence why he didn't send the votes back to state legislatures for scrutinizations, which he could have done. Get the rigors, he writes with an exclamation point, and basically doubles down on the conspiracy theories, then doubles down on the illegality of throwing it to the state legislatures and not going through the electoral count process, not going through the constitutional process. You mentioned Popak, attorney-client privilege. There are, of course, exceptions to the attorney-client privilege. Number one, if it's not a confidential communication between an attorney and their client, that's not a privileged communication. So with Corcoran, Corcoran had a lot of interactions with the Department of Justice, with the FBI, with the National Archives on behalf of Donald Trump, but he was the point person having those communications. So all of the communications that he had with the FBI, with the DOJ, where we know that he was basically falsely saying that the documents had all been returned, they could question him on all of that. Why were you saying that? Why were you lying? Um, the fact that they put forward a declaration through Christina Bob saying a diligent search was conducted and that here are all of the records back in June of 2022, which we know was false. I'm sure he was asked questions. Well, tell us every one of the steps you took in that diligent search. And if the answer was Donald Trump just told me, which I'm sure the answer is, or if it could not have been a diligent search, because we know that on August 8th, when the search warrant was executed, they found all of the records readily available right there, all these classified records, thousands upon thousands of government records and over 100 additional classified records in addition to the over 200 records, classified records that were turned over back in January of 2022. And then the you know 20 or so classified records that were turned over in that red weld folder by Christina Bob. You know, we had previously talked about here on Legal AF how Christina Bob had met twice with the Department of Justice, obviously before Corcoran uh, testify, testified before the grand jury. And Christina Bob, in her meetings, um, one of the things that she talked about was how she wanted to add language uh, to her attestation, saying that a diligent search was based on what was told to me. Because what she essentially admitted, based on all the reporting that we have, is that she never conducted a search at all. She was simply told by Corcoran that a diligent search was done, again, which we know to be completely false. Um, now, going back to the subpoena to former Vice President Pence, one of the things we've talked about here on Legal AF is while it's been incredibly frustrating the pace at which Merrick Garland's investigation was taking place, one of the reasons for that frustrating pace, though, is because as a former president of the United States, Donald Trump is cloaked at least with a toolkit that mostly everybody other than the president doesn't have. And specifically, he can use the toolkit to try to delay and obstruct in addition to the billionaire toolkit that's used by billionaires with powerful law firms to delay and obstruct. So you layer those two things on top of each other. And unfortunately, within our legal system, there is a lot of ability to delay. And specifically, a former president can assert the executive privilege, even if they're asserting it falsely. And then the issue has to be litigated, like the attorney-client privilege, right, which involves confidential communications between an attorney and a client. In theory, an executive privilege are these confidential communications that are being made with and about and to the executive branch, specifically to the president of the United States. And it's supposed to protect the deliberative process of the executive branch as it's being made. And look, there's a whole line of cases that would say that a former president can assert the executive privilege over the current executive branch, regardless where there is a compelling need by the Department of Justice for specific information. They could override the executive privilege by showing, uh, by making that showing of, of a need for their criminal investigation. And in the brick by brick build, 
that the Department of Justice was doing first under Merrick Garland, now under Jack Smith, they were able to secure the testimony and get around executive privilege based on critical rulings by the federal judge who oversees the grand juries, uh, federal judge Beryl Howell. And so previous testimony before the grand jury was testimony by Mark Short, former VP Pence's former chief of staff, Greg Jacob, former VP Pence's former general counsel, they legally had to assert executive privilege because Donald Trump had made the assertion when they testified first, then they were called back after they testified over the summer and Judge Beryl Howell made the ruling they had to testify in their communications with Donald Trump and executive privilege didn't apply. So they gave that testimony. It was the same thing with the top White House, former top White House lawyers, Pat Cipollone and Patrick Feldman, who is Cipollone's top deputy. They had to assert executive privilege. The federal judge overruled the executive privilege assertion by Donald Trump. They came back and they had to testify a second time. Had Merrick Garland not taken those steps and won those battles, we're in a very different position right now. You likely couldn't even climb the ladder legally to get the testimony of Pence to show that Pence has unique sets of information that is then critical to then overcome Donald Trump's executive privilege claim. Because as soon as it was announced that Pence was being subpoenaed, what did Donald Trump do? said that he's going to try to block it by claiming executive privilege and claiming any other privilege in the former president toolkit, which he's absolutely abusing and viewing it maliciously. But because the Department of Justice has executed this so diligently, there's really no way right now that Pence is going to be able to wiggle out of it. And Popak, to your point where you mentioned these negotiations, it's all about leverage in the negotiation of you're going to testify because why is it a negotiation at all? In the normal course, Pence would say, look, I am what's called an apex employee. I'm the vice president of the United States. I shouldn't have to testify unless you can prove, one, that you can get around certain privileges, and two, that I possess unique knowledge. And if you just went right there and rushed it, you wouldn't get the testimony. So they've had to build and build and build and build. You did a great job, Popak, mentioning all of the other people who have either been interviewed or who have gone before the grand jury. One other person who I'll mention now as well is Tom Fitton uh, went before the grand jury. He runs Judici Judicial Watch. He's the guy who wears the tight shirts. He's kind of a wannabe lawyer, um, but he gives Donald Trump advice um, and specifically he gave Donald Trump advice about the documents that you could steal these records based on things that are not legal <laughs> at, at all. Um, and then Fitton also wrote the script for Donald Trump to declare victory, even though regardless of, of Trump losing the election and Trump followed that playbook. So a lot of activity going on, but this is a diligent effort. That's why it's important that this isn't a sound bite show that we do on Legal AF. It's explaining to you brick by brick by brick what is going on. And to that point, Popak, brick by brick by brick, you know, you know, again, everything's projection, right? So these MAGA Republicans, laptop from hell, laptop from hell. And now we are also learning that early in January, another lawyer for Trump, Jim Trusty, aka Jim Don't Trust Me, um, basically uh, gave uh, contacted the FBI, said there was another classified folder found at Mar-a-Lago with those classified markings that are empty, where like no one knows, like, is, is, wh where's the content? But then this is what was interesting in the report, that there was this information about a laptop. So what was the information in the laptop and why is this significant? Yeah, it's more than interesting. It is potentially devastating because, and I love your projection thing. I'm not sure I ever saw that Star Wars episode that you were recanting, <laughs> re recapping, but I, I got the point. Point is, he who, who, he who lives by the laptop dies by the laptop. You make so much, much ado about nothing. About Let me remind people, Hunter Biden was not elected president. Hunter Biden was not elected to anything. He's a private citizen. You know, he, he may not be the... Uh, the, the the white sheep of the Biden family, but who cares? I didn't I didn't vote for Hunter Biden, and whatever he's done in his life since you know he was a child forward is really of no concern of mine. When I'm trying to decide which party I'm going to be a member of and which president I'm going to vote for, but they spent a, a an, an amazing amount of of resources, even through to today, with the 
congressional oversight committees and judiciary committees we're going to talk about in a bit going after Hunter Biden in the in the laptop that looks like he left at a repair at a, at a repair shop near his home. But I'll tell you what he didn't do. He didn't have classified United States intelligence documents loaded onto an unsecure laptop in the hands of one of his aides, this is Donald Trump, who now works for Save America PAC and had it on a thumb drive and on a laptop, which begs a couple of questions. One, why was Donald Trump having one of his people download and upload classified information, scan them in, because you know they were they were once hard hard copies, right? The the National Security Council and the briefing books don't come in digital format. They're like books. They're documents. That's why we keep seeing folders and boxes. He digitized them, had an aide put them on a laptop and a thumb drive and store them. Okay, that's if they stored them and didn't disseminate them. Where for what purpose were they loaded onto a laptop? Who had access to the laptop? And what happened to the documents when you look at the what we call the metadata, the META data, which shows a document's origination, provenance, changes, how it's transmitted, keystrokes, and all of that? Where did it go? And what was Donald Trump going to do with it in digital format? So yes, they got around to finally turning it over. The, the aide must have crapped his pants when he realized that he had... He's probably realized it for a long time that he had all this classified data on his laptop. And separately, just to remind everyone, which we like to do, the Save America PAC is in the crosshairs itself of another grand jury led by Jack Smith looking at the $100 million grift of Donald Trump raising since November 2020 to today through Save America PAC and the big lie, $100 million. And that's where this, this aid currently sits. So, oh, what a tangled web we weave. Save America pack laptops, classified documents for what purpose being loaded onto a laptop. This is now a whole new line of inquiry for the Department of Justice, not just about, hey, thank you for the laptop. Appreciate you. Here's your receipt. It's what the F, why, how, who, where did it go? What was his purpose? And now they're going to have to bring people back in to the grand jury to answer these questions, including this aide. This aide better get his own lawyer. I'm sure he has it already. Preferably not one paid for by Donald Trump. And he's going to have to sit and give testimony eventually after being interviewed by the Department of Justice about the the who, what, where, and how related to the laptop in, incident. So you have two, two things that have been reported. In December, we didn't know it till this week, more Mar-a-Lago papers classified documents not located in the original locations that we've all heard about. Not the pool, equipment, lock, door, room, not this room. A whole nother place in Mar-a-Lago, the lawyers found more classified documents. That's in December. And in January, they stumbled upon the laptop. And so this is the gift that keeps on giving. And for those that got distracted for a week or two because, oh, Joe Biden had a couple of pages also. And, oh, look, Pence has them too. And let's stay focused. Criminal investigation, criminal indictment. It's not about having the cookie jars. It's about whether your hands are caught in the cookie jars. And that's what we're still finding with Donald Trump. So I think I think now the focus, Ben, is back on because there was a lot of like hand wringing, especially among Democrats and even among some of our co anchors, about oh, there goes the Mar a Lago prosecution by Jack Smith because you know, Trump, uh, you know, Biden had his own batch. It's completely and utterly different. And things like uh, tra- you know, downloaded, scanned in classified documents into an unsecure laptop held by a aide who works for the PAC. That's going to give renewed life, if it, if it ever needed it, to Jack Smith's investigation of the Mar-a-Lago documents that aren't going anywhere. And, and, and just to wrap our last two segments together, the fact that Pence just got subpoenaed is probably at towards the end of the conclusion of that series of investigations, not towards the beginning. So if you're looking, if you're the big clock in the sky that you and I are always watching and reporting on, it's, it's just clicked a little bit closer to midnight. 
as it relates to that investigation. And same thing here as it relates to Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago is towards the end of the investigation and the decision whether to prosecute, not at the beginning. And things like the laptop are a gift to Jack Smith that I'm sure he and his people know what to do with. So here's the thing. When we make predictions on the Midas Touch Network, we're, we're not psychics, okay, number one. Uh, and nor are we making, though, wildly, you know, wild predictions. And so even when it came to the midterm elections, when all of the large media networks were saying red wave, red wave, red wave, and we at the Midas Touch Network were saying, no, there's not going to be a red wave. It's going to be very close. Democrats are going to keep the Senate. The House is going to be very close. I'm not really sure the Democrats are going to win, but it's going to be much closer than anybody could possibly imagine. And Democrats have a shot. And then everyone was like, how'd you predict that? How'd you predict that? And it was like, well, we were just following the data. And ultimately, the data, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. That's how the outcome's always going to turn out. But if you follow the actual data and you do not find yourself just trapped in narratives that other people with agendas are pushing, then I think you could say, well, here's what I think is happening and here's why. So on Legal AF, when we believe indictments are coming for Donald Trump, it's not like to give you hopium or whatever it is. It's like all we know based on all of our years and experience as lawyers and doing a lot of the research, you know, um, and, and talking to you about the pace of grand jury investigations, the teams that are involved and kind of breaking it down like that, we could say, look, these are all of the signs that an indictment is coming, that an indictment is relatively in, you know, um, uh, imminent. And here's why. Uh, doesn't mean I could say 100% that's absolutely going to happen, but that's obviously what is, um, you know, what's re what's reflective of the data. And we follow data here on the Midas Touch Network. There's one other or two other things I want to point out, Popak. Um, one of the crimes at issue with copying classified information in any form, yet alone on a laptop, is that's one of the crimes that were identified in the search warrant where a magistrate judge found probable cause that Donald Trump was engaged in criminal conduct at Mar-a-Lago back on August 5th with the search warrant being executed on August 8th of 2022. One of those crimes was the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C., Section 793, and specifically as you go into it, a subsection B, which talks about the copying. It talks about whoever, for the purpose of aforesaid, with the intent or reason to believe, copies, takes, makes, obtains, attempts to copy, take, make, obtain, any sketch, photograph, photographic, negative, blueprint, plan, map, model, instrument, appliance, etc. That could be a per se violation of the Espionage Act. That's even if someone, you were to take the classified information and just write about it and take notes on it and keep that separately, that's a crime, especially putting it on some AIDS laptop is a crime. And one other point to make before moving on to the next topic, though, um, I want to mention her when we talk about make attorneys, get attorneys as well. We mentioned Christina Bob already, but some of the reporting that came out at the end of last week as well is that Alina Haba was contacted at the end of 2022 by the Department of Justice and the FBI as well, because in connection with New York Attorney General Letitia James, a uh, special proceeding, which ended up leading to the civil fraud lawsuit, which is seeking approximately $250 million from Donald Trump, his adult children, the Trump Organization, and several other defendants. That's the case that's going to trial on October 2nd, October 2nd or 3rd of uh, 2023 that we Second. put out and that we put out in our, we put out in our trial watch. She had signed a declaration under penalty of perjury because Trump was held in contempt in the special proceeding for not turning over records. And she said back in May of 2022, in the special proceeding that had not yet been a civil lawsuit yet, because the civil lawsuit was filed in September of 2022, that she conducted a diligent search of Trump's office at Mar-a-Lago and found no responsive documents at all to the requests by Letitia James. So not only did she apparently lie and commit perjury in New York Attorney General Letitia James' special proceeding by saying she didn't find any responsive documents, but because she searched the area 
where only a few months later in August, it was determined that there were classified records being kept. She would have searched and she would have seen classified records she was not permitted to see, which also were potentially responsive in the New York. So she committed like double fraud, fraud in the New York AG's case and access to classified records that she wasn't supposed to have um, regarding Donald Trump's theft of classified records. So, you know, I've always been saying it's a matter of time before she suffers the fate of Giuliani's and Sidney Powell's. And, you know, it's like you, you see these other lawyers who are going through what they went through for Trump. And yet there still is what I like to call them kamikaze Trump fascist lawyers who line up for this crap. It's unbelievable. This is why this is why you don't vouch for clients. First of all, you don't take clients unless you feel you can vouch for them. Right. I I, I fire clients if I'm not comfortable with their ability to tell the truth and follow my advice. Having said that, there's a reason you don't vouch for clients even ones that you've known for a long, long time, and you don't make yourself a witness in the case that you're handling for them. I would have never, she had no choice but to go do it herself, like a DIY um, <laughs> down in Florida and search his, <clears throat> search his office, but does she put herself in that position? I would never have done that. I would have hired an outside company to go have done that, reported it back to me, and then I would have attached it somehow to some declaration or affidavit of mine that I filed off in, in state or federal court, in which I said, you know, I hired a company, the company looked. She made herself witness number one, and now, as you said, a totally prone and exposed for the Department of Justice to say, hey, when you were looking through that desk, what about those classified documents that were in top drawer number, you know, because they have a full record of exactly what they took down and video record of all of it too. This is the fascist fame they seek, and they ultimately suffer the fate of fascist fools. We have a lot to discuss here on Legal AF. Specifically, Popox got a great breakdown of how these MAGA House of Representative committee hearings completely backfired. We're going to talk about Michael Cohen meeting with the Manhattan District Attorney and, of course, the $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit against Fox by Dominion, which is set to go to trial in April. There is some major, major, major allegations being leveled by Dominion that Fox is still covering up documents. We're going to talk about that right when we come back from these messages here on Legal AF, brought to you by your favorite Midas Touch brother. Jordy, my Cellus. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Lomi. Now, I've never been able to compost before. It was always too complicated, too much work, and frankly, I don't think I even knew exactly if I was doing it right. Then I got a Lomi. Lomi allows me to turn my food scraps into dirt with just the push of a button. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns scraps to dirt in under four hours. There's no smell when it runs, and it's really quiet. Thanks to Lomi, I have way less garbage each week. My family, we're down from three bags per week to just one. And here's something pretty cool. My wife, she recently started gardening and we've been able to use the dirt that Lomi produces to help fill the garden. And since I got my Lomi, I throw out way less garbage. That means it's not going to landfills and producing methane. Instead, I turn my waste into nutrient rich dirt that I can feed to my plants. I feel so great knowing that I'm composting and creating soil instead of waste. And I have basically a limitless supply of dirt for my garden. The other week I had my in-laws over for dinner and the food cleanup process was such a breeze. Plus they all think I'm super eco-conscious now. If you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make cleanup after dinner that much easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash Legal AF and use the promo code Legal AF to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to lomi.com slash legal AF and use promo code legal AF at checkout. Food waste is gross. Let Lomi save you a cold trip out to the garbage can. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, NordLocker. Cyber criminals, surveillance, malware. <sighs> you just want to run your business and do a good job for your customers. And this is what you have to deal with. It is frustrating, but there's a solution. It's NordLocker. Secure and control your business's data in an end-to-end -end encrypted cloud with NordLocker. You can see and manage the organizations via your admin portal, and your business data stays protected from data leaks, ransomware, and theft. 
With Nordlocker for business, you can manage members in the organization. You can set up roles to make sure that the data is only accessible to the right people. You could check and manage your license limit and the number of currently active users, access businesses settings, and control file sharing outside of your organization and recover your account. See Nordlocker Business in action now with a three free month trial by visiting nordlocker.com slash creators with the code legal AF. Again, that's nordlocker.com slash creators and use the code legal AF. Our next partner is AG1 by Athletic Greens. Now I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, boosted energy, immune system support, and I hated taking pills and vitamins and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning before working out and it makes me feel incredible and just ready to take on my day. When I take AG1, I know I'm doing something good for my body, like giving my body the nutrition that it craves and covering my nutritional bases. I've tried a ton of different supplements out there, but this is different and the ingredients are super high quality. I got started with AG1 because I used to take all these different pills and gummies and frankly, what I was taking was expensive and I didn't even know if it was good for me. But with AG1 by Athletic Greens, I know that what I'm consuming has the best ingredients and also tastes delicious. AG1 makes it easier for you to take the highest quality supplements, period. When I started my AG1 journey, very quickly I noticed that it helps me with, you know, improved overall digestion, my energy levels were up, and just overall I was feeling great. It's just one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day, and it's a seamless and easy daily habit to maintain. The Midas Mighty asks me all the time, Jordy, how do you have so much energy to do these ad reads? Well, if I could only pick one thing, it's AG1 by Athletic Greens. Just one daily serving covers my day's nutritional basis and supports my long-term gut health with 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. I can't think of another daily routine that pays off as well as AG1, which is why I trust the product so much. If you're looking for a simpler, cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash legal AF. That's athleticgreens.com slash legal AF. Check it out. And now back to the video. And welcome back to Legal AF. Ben Micellis, Michael Popak. Good thing we've got Jordy doing those. You know, we <laughs> hold the audience throughout those ads now that we've got Jordy. Yeah. People love Jordy as the ad reader. I want to especially thank our sponsors as well, though, because look, this pro democracy content. Th- they lean in our sponsors, you know, by sponsoring our program. And so I just want to thank them all for supporting the show. Popak, so this week we saw there was no, there is not a line from Star Wars. You mentioned it earlier that the projection is strong, Obi-Wan. That's just me. That was me making that up. Um, but the projection was strong. Michael Popak. Oh, this is an Easter egg. He just did Yoda. I, I, I hope I did, Yoda. I hope that's what I don't sound like all the time. Um, but so, so these two committee hearings that started off with the Twitter one. Um, and in the Twitter hearing, former Twitter executives were there. And then people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and all these MAGA Republicans just like yelled at them. You know, why did you shadow ban me? Why did you block me? You know, and then the Twitter executives were like, because... You spread COVID disinformation and you lied about the pandemic and you spread Russian disinformation and you like stalked uh, survivors of school shootings and you praised Alex. We we can go on a list of the reasons there are multiple (laughs) violations of basic human decency. That's what you call a counterpunch. See, here's the thing, Popak. These MAGA Republicans, as I mentioned, probably inartfully, but perhaps humorously or perhaps disgustingly in the intro, so I won't say it again, but they live in their own MAGA fascist bubble where they go on Fox and OAN and all of these places, right? And they are given a softball like, so tell me about the weaponization. And then they'll go, well, the weaponization. And then Hannity or whoever will go, yeah, these Democrats are despicable. You know, it's just disinformation right into the veins. But these people are idiots. And that's why they hate our court system. And that's why they lose all of their court cases, you know, usually where, especially where the court cases are tinged with, you know, their political conspiracies um, is because they're not fact-based. 
this these committee hearings though are so incredible because you've got really intelligent Democrats, especially some of the new Democrats as well. Like you got Dan, Go you know Dan Goldman for example. Like you got former federal prosecutors. I mean Jamie Raskin, Harvard educated lawyer. Dan Goldman from New York, who was the first impeachment, uh, led the first impeachment uh, hearing um, as counsel there, and was a former federal prosecutor. You know, and then you got people like Comer and Boebert, and they think they're having these Perry Mason. <laughs> moments right where they're like well let me tell you this you know and or or jim jordan basically you know going wild with like his board and then you have people like katie porter like you're a moron let me explain to you why you're a moron um and democrats basically showed in all of this that MAGA republicans are doing everything they're accusing Democrats of doing, which Democrats are not doing. The MAGA Republicans are doing. Like they had to take breaks. These MAGA Republicans. I, I got to go to the restroom. But we saw oh, like yeah. a really smart and sharp Democratic Party. You know, really punching back. Tell us about these hearings, Popak. Well, first of all, um, if we're going to talk about weaponization, let's talk about it in a good way. Hakeem Jeffries, in a master stroke. <laughs> put just the right people who are so much brighter than their counterparts that are chairing and co-chairing and in the majority on these committees. I mean, th they learn, the Democrats learn from the Jan 6 committee the following lesson. Don't do what the Republicans did, which was to try to take your ball and go home because there's another ball and the game was still being played. And so that didn't work. That just left them on the outside, not being able to do daily press conferences or in real time push back against the Jan 6 committee. They, the Democrats weren't going to make that mistake again. You know, um, Hakeem Jeffries in, in working with his counterpart, McCarthy, was like, OK, I get five seats on there. OK, here's who I'm going to put on. Jamie Raskin, Dan Goldman, Dan Goldman, former uh, senior counsel, legal counsel for the uh, impeachment managers of the House in the Ukraine impeachment. Who knows more about things related to Ukraine, Donald Trump's corruption related to Ukraine and Joe Biden in terms of having any kind of, of uh, veracity or credibility than Dan Goldman. Dan Goldman or the chairman from Kentucky, Jim Comer, whose who's big claim to fame and big focal point for his entire hearing was to have the New York Post, this was their great scheme, the New York Post, which let me just tell people who don't live in and around New York, the New York Post is not the paper of record. It is not a place where you go for breaking investigative journalism. Although it was founded by Alexander Hamilton, little known fact, it has never won a Pulitzer Prize or any prize for investigative journalism ever in its history. This is not where you go for that. You know where you go for? I go for it. You go for the sports section. But you don't go for like headline, Hunter Biden's laptop. This is how they drove or tried to drive the messaging. So let's start with Dan Goldman versus Comer, which is the bathroom break one that you talked about. And I did a little bit of a hot take on it. Comer starts with, let's talk about corruption and Biden. And here's the equation that Comer set up, which each piece is factually true. It just doesn't lead inexorably to the conclusion that he's making that Biden, Joe Biden, is corrupt. He said, it's it's a fact, Joe Biden met with an advisor to the Bur uh, Burisma Oil Company, which is where Hunter Biden was on the board for $50,000 a month. That's all a fact. And then after he met with the Burisma advisor, when he was vice president in 2016, okay, we're like, okay, yes. Then he, he worked to fire the prosecutor, the lead prosecutor in Ukraine, because he was getting too close to Burisma and the corruption between the Biden family and Burisma. Okay, stop. Joe Biden's very public about this and very transparent about it. One thing you can say about Joe Biden, in 50 years in office, he was the youngest senator we've ever elected and the oldest president. Okay, you may not like Joe Biden, not, not on our show, but in general, you may not like Joe Biden, but, but he's not corrupt. And, and he's very transparent. He's not a black box, if you will. So he was very public about this. He did meet with the Burisma advisor. He was vice president at the time. By the way, vice presidents don't set policy. Little known fact, the Republicans seem to forget. He was the ambassador, if you will, the vice president for a president called Barack Obama. So whatever Barack Obama's policies were, that's what Joe Biden was out doing. 
So he met in, he met with Burisma, and yes, he did. Yes, it will admit it. He 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 put pressure on Ukraine to fire that prosecutor. Why? Because the British, the Allies, the International Monetary Fund all wanted that prosecutor uh, removed because of corruption that he was not pursuing, the opposite of the argument or the narrative by the Republicans. It's because the guy wasn't chasing crime that they wanted him removed. It's a, look, Ukraine's got that problem right now. You know, Zelensky's still dealing with major corruption and he's just firing people in his cabinet left and right because of it. It is a problem endemic to Ukraine and it has been going on for quite some time, including in 2016. But every one of our allies and every one of the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations like the IMF, wanted this guy gone because they didn't say he was corrupt, but he wasn't pursuing corruption. Let's leave it at that. Not because he was going after Burisma and getting too close to the Biden family. So Dan Goldman says, all right, everything you just said, Mr. Comer, about this link between the prosecutor and Joe Biden, all this, it's 100% categorically false. Now, then he leaned back. It's like the rope-a-dope that Joe Biden did at the, uh, at the State of the Union. He leaned back and he let Comer lean in. And Comer leaned in and said, uh, is the, you know, they always have this, this, um, ceremonial uh, kabuki theater when they're in the when when they're in their house is the fine gentleman from new york sure about that and then then goldman just unleashed his right hand onto comer and said yes basically there's one person in this room and it's not you comer who knows more about trump the corruption of Trump and Ukraine and the and the whole Biden issue than me because I was the lawyer for the House House impeachment managers about Ukraine. So he pulled out his pad. He said, let me read you all the conclusions that were reached based on the facts, including the we we have forgotten about this because there's been so many other crimes committed by Donald Trump. The one of the original crimes, the quid pro quo where he tried to force then newly elected President Zelensky into opening a, this is Trump, opening a prosecution against Joe Biden and against um, Hunter Biden and Burisma, or he wouldn't give him the $400 million aid package. And that is the reason, you know, we already had, and it's a friend of the show, he's, tested, he's been on the show with you and the brothers, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Vidman testified. He, as soon as he heard that quid pro quo, he went and raced and reported it as a violation of law. And that's one of the reasons of the many that Trump got impeached. So Dan Goldman said, sure, let me lay out my case. This is another example of the Republicans, too smart by half, leading with their chin and getting knocked out by a counterpunch by a very primed and ready to go set of Democrats. So that went really terribly. So terribly that Comer, when he got punched in the face, said, oh, I think it's time for a bathroom break. He literally took a bathroom break, which is like, you know, the tennis player that's getting his ass kicked and has to take the 20 minute bathroom break to kind of change the uh, the way the game is going. And then he came back and he moved on to other to other topics. And, and I and we joked about this. You know, who doesn't need this job, but does it so masterfully as a patriot? Dan Goldman. Dan Goldman is one of the wealthiest congressmen or congresspeople in, in the House. He is an heir to the Levi Strauss, Levi jeans fortune his great grandfather founded levi's he's worth 250 million dollars he doesn't need this he does it for a reason the same reason you and i do it because we're trying to protect democracy and if they thought letting some democrats out of the panel that that, that were handpicked by hakeem jeffries they'd be able to control the narrative it's going terribly for the republicans if you want to know what winning looks like this is winning from the minority position of the democrats and you got the same problem on the twitter side ben what did you think about the twitter executives basically as jamie raskin said confirming there was no collusion between the administration and twitter that twitter for its own self-interest and its own survival instinct decided not to run certain stories because they were misinformation in fact, if there was any administration trying to influence Twitter, it was the Trump administration consistently over everything, over almost any insult that came Donald Trump's way. One of them was a Chrissy Teigen insult where Trump had the government demand that Twitter take down a Chrissy Teigen post because she called him a mean name. And so, again, Everything that Trump accused and everything MAGA Republicans accused Democrats of, there's not only no evidence to support it, but all of the evidence is that the MAGA Republicans were doing it. In fact, what we learned from the Twitter hearings is that the Twitter actually 
because the MAGA Republicans try to basically like play the refs, right? And try to intimidate the refs so that the refs can, you know, you know, rule in their favor. Twitter changed a lot of its existing policies to not remove Donald Trump and other MAGA Republicans because they violated the decency policies so much that Twitter's like, we have to make exceptions for it because these are government officials. So they actually went out of their way to allow things that were per se violations of Twitter policies. And these aren't conservative ideas. That's why I say never call these MAGA Republicans conservative. It's not like they're being removed from Twitter because they have a certain view about economic policy or tax cuts. These are maniac human beings who are attacking survivors of school shootings. These are maniacs who are defaming victims of school shootings. These are maniacs spreading COVID disinformation. These are maniacs who are platforming Vladimir Putin conspiracies. These are maniacs who are saying horrific and racist things that if anybody else said it, they should be removed from a platform. Like, could you imagine people talk about, oh, Twitter is a town square? You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene enters into the town square and starts saying all of the things she says on Twitter. Oh, wait a minute. She does. She does do that now in the House of Representatives. We saw her dress like a spy balloon. And this isn't me making fun of her outfit. This is what her team this said. Was the, this was the feather boa outfit? Yeah, her own office said she wanted to dress up like the Chinese spy balloon. And then she proceeded to yell the whole time. And these MAGA Republicans yelling at President Biden's most incredible speech I've ever seen in the history of of like states of the union speeches, as he just did exactly what the Democrats did here in these committee hearings. You kind of and because these MAGA Republicans, though, They also underestimate Democrats and why I said in the front, like they think their shit don't stink or I called it their fascist farts or whatever I called it, though. It's because they live in their own echo chamber, which is not a world of decency. In a world of decency, you say any of these things at a corporation, you get fired. Big, big company, small company, nonprofit. And not because you're getting canceled. It's because you're a raceful, hateful, bigoted conspiracy theorist. and, And that's not a way you can work with individuals and human beings. You're acting like a basement dwelling 4chan conspiracy theorist Nazi in public. Yeah, you should be fired. That's not being canceled. That's being held accountable. That's what's that's taking they, but, place. But Ben, that's how they got elected. That That's their constituency. That's what yeah. they run on. So of course they're going to act like that. But well, the, you know, you said you just one thing about the speech. Yes, he gave a great speech, Joe Biden, certainly one of the more memorable ones. But he was best on his feet when he rope-a-doped them at the end to get the Republicans to commit to Medicare and other social safety net things because they weren't expecting that he would have the ability off the cuff to ad lib as effectively as he did. He lured them in to a trap that they didn't see coming because they're so busy. It's so easy to sit in the back like you're, you know, a sophomore in high school and you don't like the show that's being put on the stage. The liar. And then he's like, oh, really? Let's talk about that. But off script, which is where I know I talk to people about this, and I know his handlers were probably getting white knuckled at that moment, but he was the best off script. If you don't think an 80 year old has the vim and vigor to run for office and reelection, you haven't met Joe Biden. Yeah. And you saw these MAGA Republicans exposing themselves at the State of the Union, exposing themselves at these committee hearings. Again, every accusation was something that they did. And in that format, Democrats are just crushing them. They might as well have been Democrat hearings showing what maniacs the MAGA Republicans are to the country. How incredible was that to see? We also broke some news here on the Midas Touch Network. You know, I have that show with the, it's called Political Beatdown that I do now with uh, Michael Cohen. We do it uh, live Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, and then Thursdays as well, 9 a.m., 12 uh, Eastern, uh, uh, morning and early afternoon if you're on the East Coast. And look, I mean, to have, one Cohen's become like a great friend of mine. I love Cohen. Um, and I think that 
his mea culpa and something that's going to go down in history and how he now speaks the truth and stands for good is something that I think is is great. He's also breaking news and he's the key witness in a lot of these cases right now that are taking place against Donald Trump. So he told us he was going to be speaking with the Manhattan DA. Alvin Bragg's investigation is heating up. One way we know Alvin Bragg's investigation is heating up is that Cohen keeps on testifying there. So the fact that Cohen's now met this was the second time he's met with Alvin Bragg. It's 15th overall. And he told us he'll be meeting the 16th time very soon with Alvin Bragg. To me, I could tell you with, not because Cohen said anything, if you just analyze what Alvin Bragg is doing, that the timing of the grand jury, if I didn't even know Cohen, the fact that Cohen keeps on showing back up, that Alvin Bragg indictment, I believe, hits before the summer. But Alvin Bragg is definitely going to be indicting Donald Trump individually. And it could be it could be more. I hope it's more than just the Stormy Daniels, uh, Donald Trump's paying hush money to a porn star who he uh, had sex with while his wife was pregnant. This is the MAGA Republicans uh, person. But covering that up, having Cohen pay, writing it off the way Trump did as a legal expense. Um, it's kind of a slam dunk. You know, I guess there's no case that's a slam dunk case, but it's a very strong case. But I, I hope that there's more to the case as well than just that one charge. But he's going to be indicting Donald Trump. I, I have no doubt about it. Anything else you want to add, Popak, about Cohen? I think they, well, not about Cohen. We've talked about it in a number of places, but I think I think Alvin Bragg needs one more piece of the puzzle, one more thing to fall into place, one more shoe to drop before he indicts. And, and he's he's holding out hope of hope that the continued squeezing of Alan Weisselberg sitting 12 miles away on Rikers Island from the Manhattan DA's office is going to bear some more fruit. He needs, I believe he needs Alan Weisselberg in a courtroom uh, not for the indictment, maybe for the indictment. No, the indictment he probably could get. To be honest, he could probably get the indictment right now. If Michael Cohen testifies, and all signs are that he's being primed and prepped to go into the grand jury. I mean, these are nice meetings. Michael gets to report about them on your show. And we I've watched the recent one where he even talks about what he talked about, which is interesting. But having said that, um, he's got to go in. That's not enough. You can't indict um, without him going into the room and giving that uh, some version of his testimony to a grand jury, a special grand jury of 23 people sitting in Manhattan. I believe they need Alan Weisselberg for a number of reasons. We, we like Michael a lot, but he comes with some baggage as a witness um, because of his prior convictions and his prior felonies. And so Alan Weisselberg, also a convicted felon, um, is the other end of, it puts it inside the Trump office um, at that very time. So Michael as we know, set up an LLC, a company, because Donald Trump told him to do it, paid money that looked like it was his own money through that company to Stormy Daniels and to others, um, and then got reimbursed as legal expenses or legal retainer on the books and records of the company. Um, that would have gone through Donald Trump and Alan Weisselberg, according to Michael Cohen. I, you're never going to get Donald Trump to testify. I think you need Weisselberg. I don't, at a trial, I don't think they get a conviction of in the Stormy Daniels matter, just with Michael Cohen. That's I, you may not agree with me, but I believe there needs to be a, a one more witness to corroborate and to kind of rehabilitate Michael when he's invariably cross-examined on some of his credibility issues. Yep, we will keep you posted there when uh, we get more information there. And finally, Popak, I want to talk about Dominion's one point six billion dollar defamation lawsuit set to go to trial mid-April. It's right around the corner. There was a status conference this week. You did a great uh, breaking news hit on what took place there. It seems that Fox is not being that forthcoming with its documents, would be putting it as an understatement. But what we do know already, though, is like Dominion's now got the deposition of, of Murdoch and Lachlan and Murdoch's Rupert's son, Rupert, all of the executives at Fox, they've gotten those depots, all of the key anchors, and they all knew. N none of them believed Donald Trump. Um, they, they, they all were aware that this was a big lie, and that's what they privately testify under oath. I certainly hope Dominion does not settle this lawsuit because I, I think it's important 
that we see Hannity take the stand, that we see Tucker take the stand, that we see these people. And I, I, I do hope there's a camera in the courtroom. It's in Delaware Superior uh, Court, so I don't know their rules about cam. I'm sure the media will petition, but I, I hope there is transparency. So far, I don't like that the judge has kept a lot of things under seal and confidential. And I know it's a high profile case that I, I don't think should be confidential and, and, and under seal. I get that there are prominent things in the case, but I still think that there should be a public access to these files. It's not proprietary information emails uh, by people like Hannity and Tucker and people showing that they're spreading disinformation. I think that needs to uh, see the sunlight. But tell us about why Fox is doing more than just not wanting existing documents to see the sunlight, but look like they're trying to intentionally destroy or spoliate records. Yeah, so let's let's frame it first. We're in the Delaware Superior Court, not the Delaware Chancery Court of Equity that you and I often talk about, like when Elon Musk had his lawsuit in Delaware. That was in a different courthouse. I will tell you that practicing trial lawyers like me like the Delaware Superior Court to go try cases. It's a very favorable pay place for a plaintiff and a plaintiff's lawyer overall. It's often referred to a little bit as the wild, wild West. And Eric Davis, who's the judge presiding over it, who came out of an old firm, a firm that I used to work with back when I started my career, is he's just trying to get this case ready for trial. And I think one of the reasons he hasn't um, as of yet, strip the the sealing off the SEAL, the seal off documents, and let them go into the public. And I'll tell you where the fight is right now, that news media is trying to get to certain documents, which is different than the, 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 the topic of the segment, or the main topic of the segment is Fox News is still hiding documents on, on uh, personal servers, on hard drives, um, and uh, board minutes two months from trial, which I got to tell you is supremely unusual that they're still arguing two months from trial about so many categories of documents that Fox News hasn't turned over. Now, Dan Webb, the trial lawyer, kind of infamous, trial, famous trial lawyer, brought in by Fox News late to try the case when it, when it looked like it was there wasn't going to be any settlement. He said, well, you know, we're both sides have that problem. Uh, I just got 70,000 pages of damages documents from the other side. So judge, we're both doing it. It, which, you know, that kind of whataboutism usually does not fly in a courtroom. Like, well, we did it, but what about what they did? That's not what, why we're here, Mr. Webb. We're here about why haven't your, why isn't your client two months from trial and after the close of discovery or close to the close of discovery uh, process, why haven't you turned over the do these key documents? Where are they? And if they're missing, as, as you said, Ben, earlier in the show, then we have destruction of evidence or what we call in the business spoliation, which is a whole nother hornet's nest that you don't want to open if you're uh, the Fox News. They better hope they still have and have preserved the documents that are missing. And what we're not really talking about is a failure to properly preserve, hide, destroy documents, because that is a whole nother world they do not want to be in two months from trial. And on the balance, you know, the judge is doing a, a balancing act. He knows there's going to be a jury. He knows the jury's going to be picked in about two months. And I think he's concerned that with the that so much got filed by both sides under seal, both sides. The thing that the newspapers and media companies like NPR, New York Times, and others are going after is that there were competing motions that were filed about two or three months ago. Fox corporation and all the foxes filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit but but attached almost like in summary judgment format like looking for a final judgment on the pleadings without having to go all the way to a trial thousands and thousands of pages of, of documents emails to show and and just to put it on the table the fight in this defamation libel case for 1.6 billion is not whether these things got said on the air by the you know, the uh, Janine Pierros, Bartiromos, Carl, Tuck, Tuck, Tucker Carlson's or Hannity's. They said it. They said the Dominion voting machines had software that flipped votes from, from Trump to Biden, created for the Venezuelan election process by the Chinese. I mean, it was crazy stuff. It got said on the air on their shows. But if it didn't get said with what's called actual malice, a legal term, meaning the person that said it, one of these commentators, n knew that what he was saying or she was saying was false, or with reckless disregard as, as to whether it was true or false, 
that gets you, that's jackpot. That gets you defamation of a, of a company uh, by Dominion because media companies want to always hide behind the First Amendment. Everything that's protected by the First Amendment, which is true up to a point, and that point under a line of cases we call New York Times v. Sullivan, is actual, actual malice. So that's the fight. What did people know at the time that they made the statements on air? It's already been leaked that Hannity never believed the big lie. It's a big surprise. Yet promoted it and pushed it frequently, including against Dominion voting systems on his show. If that's true, that is an element, a badge of actual malice for Fox to put on in front of the jury. And so they filed that motion to dismiss with all those documents, uh, Fox. But the plaintiff filed a motion for summary judgment saying, we don't even need a trial judge. All of these facts are stipulated or are not disputed. And based on this, we've proven actual malice. We don't even need a jury trial. And to do that, they had to attach all of these documents stamped confidential by and sealed by Fox. So, so of course, that's like amazing fodder for the media companies. They want to get their hands on all these filings and all these attachments so they can do reporting. But the judge is balancing that against, I'm picking a jury in about two months, and I don't need this case tried in the New York Times, NPR, or the Midas Touch Network. Popak, great analysis, but we're definitely going to be covering it on the Midas Touch Network when the trial happens. When the trial happens, you're not going to be able to keep that stuff secret anymore. Um, and I think sunlight's the best disinfectant to fascism. And that's what we do here on the Midas Touch Network, bring sunlight here, uh, whether it's on the Legal AF show, the Midas Touch Brothers show, Political Beatdown, or any of our other programs, the Weekend Show. Um, I can go on and on and on, but we got to speak truth to power. Our, oh, the, the new show that we got on the network, Majority 54, um, with uh, Jason Kander and Ravi Gupta. A lot of programming here. Midas Touch Network is uh, is expanding. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers. So if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you hit subscribe now. If you've not seen Killing County on Hulu, make sure you check out Killing County on Hulu right now about the crime corruption cover up all taking place in Bakersfield. It's a true crime series, but highlights the crime cover up corruption in Bakersfield, Kevin McCarthy's district. So check that out and let me know what you think about Killing County. It's a big hit right now on Hulu. It's doing really, really, really well. It's really a, a I think it's I think it's really well done. And I think you will um, uh, feel very strongly after watching that, that that there needs to be some change. Uh, in place and also what a hypocrite Kevin McCarthy is and all these MAGA Republicans are. Also, make sure you subscribe to Legal AF on audio. So wherever you get your audio, um, search Legal AF, subscribe to the audio podcast of Legal AF, leave a five-star review. It really helps with the algorithm. So just search Legal AF and, uh, and make sure you hit subscribe, leave a review, we would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel right after this video ends. It just takes a few minutes um, to do. Check out store.midastouch.com for the best pro-democracy gear. That's store.midastouch.com. Get your Legal AF shirts as well as all of your Midas Touch gear, including Convict or Convict 45 shirts. And check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. We have a lot of exclusive content on our Patreon site, but most importantly, when you become a member of our patreon it helps grow this independent media platform we're not funded by any outside investors we're 100 independent 100 accountable to you and you alone that's our model to do that we have this membership uh a plan over at uh, patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Don't worry, it doesn't affect any of the content we do on YouTube. But if you can become a member, check out the exclusive content there and uh, and and join right now. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. As always, Michael Popak, I love spending the weekend with you. I love sharing this Legal AF program with the world. And also want to say thank you to all the Legal AFers, everyone in the Midas Touch community, all of you watching, all of you listening. None of this is possible without you. We love, we love, love, love the Midas Touch community. Um, so make sure you go out there, take these messages and spread democracy around the world. We'll see you next time. And a special shout out to the Midas Mighty.